This 10-minute session will discuss formats and issues with audio files. It'll give you a brief introduction to the audio variables that affect the quality of your sound and the bandwidth and file size required. These issues relate to the quality of your listening, recording, and editing. First, let's think about the importance of audio in this age of video and images. Just imagine a TV show or a movie with no sound. Imagine you're deaf, but you and how well can you follow the action, for example, on a talk show? Now think of the same show with no picture. You could follow it pretty well. In fact, radio shows, podcasts, audiobooks all create images and action, but in the mind. In many ways, audio is more important than video. One of the variables we'll discuss is audio file sampling, and digital audio is sampled thousands of times per second with each minute sample recording the volume and pitch at that moment. You can record one or two stereo tracks, but if you record two tracks, that will of course take twice the bandwidth and twice the storage capacity of one. In general, the more samples per second, the higher the quality of your, quality of your audio file. The samples range from 44,000 per second, which is CD quality audio, quite high, down to 8,000 per second, which is kind of a scratchy, passable voice quality. Another variable is your choice of codec. Codec stands for compressor decompressor. Raw audio is so large that it must be compressed for effective transmission and storage of the audio files. You've all heard of MP3. That's one common audio codec. Each different codec is specialized for either music or voice, high quality or low bandwidth, for example, for effective streaming. In general, with codecs, the more compression that is applied, the smaller the audio file and the faster it will transmit over your internet connection. But also the more compression, the lower the quality of the listening experience. How about file type properties? You know the three character file suffix specifies the file type. A song labeled heyju.mp3 is a file using the mp3 codec. Since mp3 is proprietary, any software that uses it must license that codec. Similarly, happybirthday.wav uses Microsoft's WAV format, and Apple uh, formats AIFF and AAC are also commonly used. For software that desires to get away from proprietary formats requiring licensing, the OGG format can be used, for example, jailhouserock.og. Let's think about listening. Only two variables really affect your listening quality. For streaming audio, it's your internet or network bandwidth, which can limit the rate of the audio coming to you. The biggest variable is the quality of your headphones or speakers. Uh, at all costs, avoid the speakers that come with your laptop or computers. And uh, even cheap headphones will vastly improve the audio quality. How about recording? There are loads of variables that affect the recording quality. Uh, the microphone quality is probably the biggest. But the recording environment, a quiet place with, without um, strange sounds or echoes, the way you speak or sing or record into the microphone, and whether your computer can handle a continual stream of audio coming into it without any hiccup or, or even minute interruption, and a cable that is shielded to um, keep interference such as that from fluorescent lights or other radio sources. Your choice of sampling settings and codec also affect your recording quality. The microphone, though, bears a little extra thought. The blue snowball on the right is a USB microphone that is just under professional quality. And between 100 and 200 bucks, you can get such a microphone. The second best for speaking or singing is a headset microphone. But you'll want to hold the microphone close to your mouth or close to the audio source, and you'll want to avoid speaking directly into the microphone or it will record your breath. Ideally, speak to the side above or what's best is to speak just below the microphone. That way the breath coming out of your nostrils are, is aimed away from the mic. 
Watch the recording level. Usually you can see little bars of green where as the volume increases, as it goes into yellow, you may get a little inter a, a little distortion. If it gets into red, you're guaranteed distortion. The best recording area is as it just touches the yellow. Let's close with editing. Inexpensive audio editors are something that every student and teacher should learn how to use. They're, all, they're word processors for sound. Every Macintosh comes with GarageBand. Audacity can be downloaded for any computer. In general, they operate with one track per audio source. Track is a concept you need to learn. And each track can have a separate volume. So if you have a music track, the volume for that can be reduced so it does not interfere with your voice track. There are filters you can apply to each track to allow things like fade in or fade out or to reduce the ambient noise. And finally, once you save a file that can typically no longer be edited. In other words, if you save it as an MP3 or AAC, you can no longer bring it back into the audio editor with separate tracks. Well, that's been 10 minutes of audio. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.